To be fair, I get that it's called the reading rush, but the only thing I've been rushing to do is rush away from my problems. We'll see how this week goes. Hi friends, my name is Joel and welcome back to my booktube channel. If you haven't checked out my writing vlog that I uploaded on Friday, go and check that out because I share some of my tips and tricks for writing and also delve a bit more into what I'm currently working on. And if you haven't checked out my Twitter nor my bookstagram, go and check those out because I'm also active on those platforms and I post some quite good content on there too. For this video, um, I'm going to be chronicling chronicling? It is the Reading Rush, which is, used to be called the Booktubeathon, but then it rebranded into the Reading Rush. And it is a week-long readathon, which basically brings the entire book community together. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. And we all read as many books as we can. And this is my first Reading Rush as a booktuber, like, we love to see it. We love to see it. And I was really like, umming and ahhing about whether I was going to do a vlog for the reading rush but a lot of people were like yeah do it like we want to see it because today is Wednesday and so I was like it would be a bit late if I did a vlog now but everyone seemed to be fine with it so and plus I've already done one of the books for the reading rush anyway so like we're already succeeding and that's amazing. I finished uh, The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty and it was part of my Deva vlog which was uploaded last Tuesday so definitely go check that out if you want to uh, see my reactions to the entire trilogy. Although grab snacks because the video is an hour long. So yeah. But no, I was talking with Elias and he was just like, yeah, do it. Like, come on. And then I was completely convinced. Like, I'm just gonna like share my TBR with all of you and then we can uh, get started on this vlog. So the first book is to read a book according to the color of your birthstone. And now I always wear my birthstone. Can I do like what all the beauty gurus do? Oh, there we go. Oh my God, I see why they do it now. So I have an amethyst as my birthstone because I am born in the month of February. And so I decided to choose Wicked As You Wish by Rinja Paco. If you don't know, Rinja Paco wrote The Bone Witch and The Bone Witch was an iconic, amazing book. I really need to finish the series. I need to, I'll get those books soon. But Wicked As You Wish is another one of her books. And I'm really excited to be delving into this one because from the synopsis, it was just really interesting. Seems to combine a lot of like different fairy tales together, which seems really exciting. It has like found family, magic, and it just, mm, I love a good found family story. And so this matches Purple quite well. So I'm thinking definitely good for, um, the second book was then to read a book with the word there as the first word, and so I chose The Court of Miracles by Castor Grant. This is the Illumicrate edition that I had unboxed in my Illumicrate unboxing, and I am just really excited to be getting into this. Danny from the book order said he liked it, although it wasn't the best, and he's still wanting to read the sequel, so I'm not going in with especially high hopes, but hopefully I'll be pleasantly surprised and maybe like it a bit more. But the one thing that I do really like about the book is how great it looks naked, like... We need more naked good covers, like... Things look good naked, what can I say? And so this one is kind of a Les Miserables retelling, and it just seems like really, really intriguing. And so I cannot wait to delve into this one either. The next book was to then read something that was inspired by film. And so I chose Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. This one I received early because I'm doing a bookstagram tour with Pride Book Tours. And so I got a copy of the UK paperback quite early. Although I'm also wanting to get the US hardback as well because it just looks so freaking gorgeous. And I just, the artistry, the artistry is just amazing and I love it. And so this one is like a sapphic Cinderella inspired story where they're going to tackle the patriarchy and it just sounds amazing and something that I definitely want to read. The next book was then to read the first book you touched and that was for me The Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. Again, if you want to see my, my entire reaction to this book, you can do so um, in the day of the vlog. Uh, I'm not going to say much about it because you can go watch that video, but again, phenomenal, amazing, love it, wow, writing on point, mm, good taste. Then it was to read a book entirely outside, and so I'm choosing the Adventure Zone Graphic Novel Volume 1, Here They Be Goodlins. It is going to be quite a quick read, and I think I can definitely read this outside 
really fast. I'm like mildly introverted. I'm ambiverted, so the less time I have to spend outside, the better. Although I think it would be really nice to go to the park and read this. I think I think it's just gonna be really exciting because I love the Adventure Zone so much and I love the balance arc and so like the balance arc is probably the most phenomenal storytelling I have seen in a podcast or even like m a lot of media in a long time and so and it's gonna be more refined now that it's in a graphic novel format and they've had time to reflect upon the story and in hindsight change it. I'm just really excited to see what happens in this. And then next was to read a book in your least read genre or in a genre that scares you and for me that's contemporary. Like I don't really read a lot of contemporaries, like I usually go for other genres a lot more. I like to escape to different places and the real world is scary, like let's be real. I chose Loveless by Alice Oseman. This is a book that has a lot of ace representation and a lot of people have been really hyping this up and I am just really excited to be getting into it as well. I have a few ace friends as well who have really said this book is great and so me trusting own voices reviews. I cannot wait to delve into this. And finally the last prompt is to read a book set in a different continent to your own and so I chose Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia and this is set in Mexico and it is a really cool Mexican inspired fantasy that goes way way S.A. Chakraborty blurb this wow okay I'm convinced that this book is going to be good but yes, this is a Mexican inspired fantasy that goes a lot into gods and monsters and it just sounds really cool, like it's an odyssey type adventure. It just seems really awesome and I cannot wait to delve into this one as well. Apart from obviously Empire of Gold, I've purposely gone for books that have around about 300 to 400 pages. I don't think any of the books I've chosen are over 450 pages because I'm thinking I'll be able to read quite because I read quite fast because I am quite a speed reader when I'm like dedicated to reading. Tonight though my goal is just to get through Court of Miracles by Caster Grant because I'm really more excited for this one and to see what happens especially because of Danny's review but also I get to discuss it with Danny afterwards so it is on my July TBR as well and so it's definitely one that I'm really hoping to get through quite quickly. I'm taking off the dust jacket because I really just want to stare at the naked uh, cover a lot more like can we just... gorgeous. I mean, let me get the other one. This is the Waterstones exclusive edition um, because it has the blue... it has the blue sprayed edges. Oh my god, I'm looking at the, the reflection of my mirror right now and just... like just imagine me as like a naked hardback book. <laughs> no, don't imagine me naked, please don't. Gorgeous and amazing and wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Can I go one reading vlog without dropping a book? Please! I'm really excited to be participating in the reading rush. I'm participating in a few of the Instagram challenges too. Today I posted a photo of Peaches and I reading The Court of Miracles, although I hadn't actually started it yet, but I mean, it's the illusion, so... And I also have some in real life things to do this week. I think I'm going to Ikea tomorrow, which is exciting. So I'm going to take you all along. I know Leo from Books with Leo and I really love Ikea a lot. So I think she'll appreciate the Ikea footage that I'm going to be placing in this vlog. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's my introduction. Welcome to the reading rush. Hi everyone, um, so I just got back home from Ikea and a bit of shopping with my sister and 
I finally managed to get the brackets that I needed for the shelves to go above my TV and so I can get more shelf space. I also got a few little things to go into my shelving unit and also the bookshelf extension for my Billy bookcase. My room is coming together and I'm really excited for it. Although I am now very worn out and so like I was supposed to be filming my writing vlog today but I really don't feel the motivation or the effort to. So I think I'm gonna film it tomorrow morning and hopefully be able to edit it and get it uploaded on time. Also, I ordered some McDonald's because I'm too lazy to cook tonight. So, got a vanilla milkshake. I also got um, mozzarella dippers and a vegetable deluxe meal, which, amazing. So, reading update. I'm basically over halfway through The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant and Whilst I am enjoying the setting and a little bit of the plot, it's not really wowing me or amazing me in most ways. Like I can see the links to Les Miserables uh, through the character names, but there's not much else. Although I am quite liking a few of the characters, but nothing is making it stand out to me. Nothing is really wowing me in any such way except for obviously I am a big history buff so I'm really liking the historical setting but I should finish this tonight and I should be able to get through it tonight and then I'll probably start straight away on another book. I think I'm gonna start on Gods of Jade and Shadow next purely because my friend CW finished Gods of Jade and Shadow today and well she said she was finishing Gods of Jade and Shadow today and she said it was really amazing and really nice. Also has that real like heart-wrenching kind of emotion and I'm fully here for it and I'm fully prepared for it. So I think as soon as I finish Court of Miracles, I will go straight on to Gods of Jade and Shadow. I also have a few business emails to send off tonight because I have some exciting things planned and hopefully um, I'll be able to do all of them. I just gotta write the emails out and send them off. I think the only thing I need now for my room uh, before I start the gallery wall project is literally just white curtains because, um, but yeah, we also hit 7,000 followers on my bookstagram today, which was amazing. Like, thank you so much for following me over there. If you don't follow me, uh, you should because I try and post some quite nice bookish photos now and then. And it's just been really nice to be back on Bookstagram. Like I used to be on Bookstagram from 2016 to like 2018. I think I was on Bookstagram even earlier than 2016 to be honest. But it's just really nice to be taking photos and editing them once again. Like photography is one of like my niche hobbies that I partake in. And I just think it's really cool to be doing that once again. And it has really like invoked that passion for me. And a lot of my friends that I have on Books Twitter and Books, uh, originally came from Bookstagram, like Rhea and V and um, even now like Clara and Danny, like all of them are like friends that I've made through Bookstagram. And Bookstagram was just an amazing place. Like it still is and I, I'm really glad to be back on there and going back to my roots, especially with like book blogging as well. There's a whole discourse that we need to have about book blogging and how we don't appreciate book bloggers enough for what they do for our community. Like I think people tend to forget that book bloggers are the root and foundation of this entire book community and that we wouldn't even have a book community today if it wasn't for book bloggers advocating and sharing all of these stories. And I think that um, we need to remember and we need to celebrate book bloggers and we need to be able to have a nice balance between Bookstagram, Booktube and book blogs and making sure that we're giving equal attention to each of them. And so in the description down below, I will have a list of book blogs that you should go check out and you should definitely go and read. The people that I know that run them are honestly some of the nicest people that I've ever met and they will fight for you for like, they will fight for diversity, they will fight for equal representation, and they do more of a job than some of the books, grammars, and booktubers I've seen on this platform. And so definitely go check them out. I am gonna go finish The Court of Miracles, like I said, and we will check back in later.
Happy Friday, everyone. Um, I finished The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant last night, and I ended up giving this three stars. I liked the world, and I loved exploring the different courts in the Paris underbelly, and just seeing how intricately designed Kester Grant had woven um, a society into the French Revolution. However, my problems started with the plot, um, there are a few time jumps throughout the novel, but they're quite jarring and it's like, it feels really weird to be time- like it's not a seamless time jump that happens quite easily, it just doesn't feel nice. And then the plot felt really convenient as well, like things were happening really easily for the characters and it was happening as if they were really lucky and that's something that I don't like in books, like your characters need to in the events that happened. It felt like this book was more plot driven than character driven, which is something that I'm not really a big fan of. Like plot driven novels can be done quite well, but it's mostly character driven novels that allow your characters to shine. I just wasn't a big fan of the plot of this. The writing style was quite nice, like the descriptions were quite cool and um, stuff, but I just didn't fall massively in love with this book and, I, and I'm quite sad that I didn't, um, but I, do, I will check out the sequel purely because I was still interested enough in the, in the world. I wouldn't exactly say it's a Les Miserables uh, retelling, it's more so inspired by Les Mis. Now that we've done this, we've completed two out of the seven books for The Reading Rush. Tonight I read Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno-Garcia. I am really excited to be delving into this and then as soon as I finish this I'm gonna be screaming at CW, but before that um, I do have a few things to do today. I have to get ready and change because I have a writing vlog to film. I know that we haven't really done much reading during The Reading Rush, but I think this weekend it'll definitely be a time where I do a majority of my reading because I have been quite busy, but I am gonna go get to getting ready and to getting prepared to film my writing vlog and yeah I'll catch up with you I guess after I have done that and did a bit of reading of Gods of Jade and Shadow. Yo, so I just finished recording my writing vlog, so now I'm gonna go edit that. And then, yeah, I think I'm gonna like relax, sit in bed, respond to some comments from the writing vlog, and then also start reading Gods of Jade and Shadow, which would be really nice as well. But no, I'm having quite a nice day so far. But yeah, no, I definitely need to get back on the reading grind. I will catch up with you all in a bit. Haha, <laughs> so the time is currently 10 past 9 and I have popped up the video, I've been replying to a few of the comments and just seeing like the response to my writing vlog has been astounding so far, like it's really nice to see that all of you are excited for the Dream Prince, but my mum very kindly bought us McDonald's again today because I forgot to cook myself something, although I'll probably cook myself something this weekend so that we can have another episode of the Fictional Fates Test Kitchen because a lot of you really like that in the creator vlog. So I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna read Gods of Jane and Shadow for a bit. I think that I just want to really want to start getting into this. Is this, which edition is this? Because I have two editions of Gods of Jade and Shadow for one specific reason. This edition has the spine like on the right way around, but the other edition that I have, the spine is printed upside down. And it completely confused me when I got it, and I had to message my friend CW and be like, is this how it's supposed to be? And she was like, no. She was like, you have a misprint. And I was like, wow, look at me go. I'm really excited to be delving into Gods of Jade and Shadow, and we'll see how this goes. Let us get started with Gods and Jade and Shadow, and I will check back in once I get into it a bit more.
Hello everyone and happy Saturday. I'm currently almost halfway through Gods of Jade and Shadow and honestly, I'm in love. I'm in love with this story. Cassiopeia is honestly iconic, amazing, we love, we stan. And just seeing like the interaction between um, the gods and just the way that the world is being built is just really riveting and ravishing and amazing and I love it. And the plot is also really easy to follow as well and it really immediately shows all of the stakes that are involved with the novel and I'm just really excited to like delve into this a bit more and see what happens. But now I am going to be hosting some reading sprints for the reading rush over on the RR Sprints Twitter. I'm excited to be interacting with all of you and just seeing what happens and it's currently five to three and so I'm gonna like post a tweet in like one or two minutes and then um, I think we're going to do our very first sprint at five past. So I'm going to go on ahead and do that, but I will check in and update you all on how these sprints are going. But yes, I am just super excited to be doing this for the reading rush and just seeing what happens across this hour and just seeing all of the progress that we all make together. Like it's going to be very cool and I cannot wait. Plus, I'm really excited to see what happens next in Gods of Jade and Shadow. The world just sucks you in straight away and is re it's really easily able to captivate and immerse you. And the writing, like Silvia Moreno-Garcia's writing is just iconic. And I know she wrote another book called Mexican Gothic, which I am now contemplating also picking up because if her writing is like Gods of Jade and Shadow, then yeah, I'm definitely gonna wanna pick up Mexican Gothic. So I am just really intrigued to see what happens next. It's definitely made me feel better after three starring The Court of Miracles because I thought I was just gonna be reading disappointment after disappointment, but luckily this has not disappointed me so far. It is like amazing, lovely. I love it, like wow. Um, so yeah, I am going to go and So we just finished our first sprint and I've been getting all of you to send the last lines that you have read and wow, there is so many of you and I've been reading, oh, that's a zoom. Um, I've been reading all of them and they just all sound really intriguing, but our next sprint is about to start. So I'm really excited to be sprinting with you again. So I asked you all to now share some of your GIF reactions to your text. Um, we have one from Samantha who says that she's on a boat, which is exciting. Annie Kay has a little carnival scene, which is quite cool. We have Freddie Highmore being really sad. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Okay. This one gets a retweet because Naya, yes, retweeted. This has just been so much fun doing it with all, you all and I am really excited to do this last sprint now. Oh my gosh! Hello, Murder She Wrote. Hello. This one gets a retweet too. So the last sprint is about to start and I, Gods of Jade and Shadow have been really amazing so far. So I am going to update you all once the last sprint finishes, but let's get going, friends. And there we go. Let's get started. So for our very last 
challenge, I asked everyone to give a one word reaction to what they just read. Don't trust people who don't stand Miles Morales. Yes, that is so true. We have some gifts being displayed. Ana Sofia Montenero says, hilarious. These sprints were just so much fun. And I am now on page um, 202 of Gods of Jade and Shadow. So I'm literally just going to go straight back into reading. Gods of Jade and Shadow. Look, you can see me in the reflection. Um, I'm just going to go back into reading Gods of Jade and Shadow. Oh no, boring is there. Oh, but I'm thinking right now, actually, I might put my bookish outfit on because I do need to take my books to Grand Photo for the day. Well, hello there, friends. I am now standing up in this weird frame kind of thing. I have never done this before. Like, my full body on camera. Wow, amazing. We are going to be doing our bookish outfit for this um, thing. And I just wanted to be like, you know, Ashley from Best Dressed. She is my inspiration. We love her. We stand her in this household. And so I was like, ooh, okay, let us, you know, work some magic with this. So um, the book that I'm going to be doing a bookish outfit for today is Cinderella is Dead by Caitlin Bayron. It is a wonderful sapphic uh, inspiration of Cinderella and I'm really looking forward to reading this after Gods of Jade and Shadow. My process for making a bookish outfit is as follows. I look at the cover, see what tones of blue are on the cover, and then I go to my wardrobe. Do I have any specific tones of blue that could match this little cover? And so I have this blue blazer, which matches quite well to the blues on the bottom of the cover. And it matches quite well to uh, the dress on the front, which I think is of Sophia. Um, so I thought this could go really well. We have a white shirt because I thought maybe a white shirt would look really well underneath. I think if I wanted to, I probably could have gone with something like gold with golden hues to match the title. That could, I could do that really well for accessories, but white shirt. And then for trousers, these are my fitness tights. And then for trousers, I have these wonderful, stunning blue trousers, which I thought matched really well to the middle tones of the cover. And so I thought, wow, that would fit really nice. Alternatively, I do have a the corduroy blue jacket, which could do altern like be an alternative outfit. But because Cinderella is dead is more like a formal ball setting, I thought my outfit should reflect a formal ball setting as well. I am about to get changed into the outfit. We shall see how it looks once I get it on. I think that fits really well. And now with all of this put together, we now have a nice little bookish outfit for Cinderella is Dead. I am like really happy with how this turned out. Um, yeah, I am just adoring this. If I wanted to wear shoes with this outfit, I would probably go for some like tan brogues, purely because of the title, because it's gold and you really want some like brownish toned shoes to go with it. Or I'd go for like some leather boots, because like leather brown boots, because they would probably fit the theme of the novel quite well, which is like a lot of adventure, it looks like. And plus her dress is quite dirty. And so probably boots to trud through the dirt. This is the entire outfit. I think it turned out really well. Wow, look at that. It is amazing. We stan it, we love it, we see it. And yeah, I'm gonna go take some Instagram photos for this and then I shall see you once I start reading more of Gods and Jade and Shadow. Thanks for watching. Well, not.
Okay, so the time is currently five to seven and I had to get home from the park really quickly because it started to rain. Like I was reading my book on the park bench and then suddenly I feel like water dripping on my face and I'm like, hmm, I wonder what that could be. And then it just started pouring down, pouring down. And I was like, I had Gods of Jade and Shadow in my hand and rain was pouring down onto it. And it was, I was like, nope, I need to get it into my bag straight away. So I was like shoving my books into my bag. I literally had to get everything into my backpack, threw my coat on and then just left the park. But I did manage to take some really nice photos for my personal Instagram. Um, I will have that linked in the description down below if you haven't followed that yet, I think you should go follow it. Um, but yeah, it was just really nice and fun. And then I came home, read a bit more of God of Jade and Shadow. Not too much though, because I have been really tired today. Like, I don't, I don't know what it is. I've just literally just been laying in my bed doing nothing because I've just been tired. Um, I think it's because of all the walking I did today. But we're about to go downstairs into the kitchen because I'm going to be making cheesecake tonight. I'm going to be making two cheesecakes. I'm making a vanilla regular cheesecake and I'm also going to be making a vanilla matcha cheesecake, which is basically taking the mixture and then just adding some matcha into it and seeing what happens because um, I really want to try it and hopefully it'll turn out well. I'm really excited to see how these cheesecakes will turn out, but to introduce it properly. Hi, my name is Joel from the Fictional Face Test Kitchen and today we're going to be making cheesecakes. Okay, an exciting thing to announce first of all is that I am now an Elcrate Instagram rep. So Elcrate is a book box subscription company that specializes in um, giving you an exclusive book per month along with a multitude of other bookish goodies. And so you can use my code FATES for 10% off your subscription. And I'll always have my rep code for them linked in the description down below so that you can use it as and when. Okay, so it's Monday, which means it's time for our wrap up. And so first thing on the agenda is cheesecake. It came out super well. And I have been, I did use um, it for my bookstagram photo and then I had to finish Gods of Jade and Shadow. But no, I'm really excited to try it. And like, let me just get a bit close. Look at this deliciousness. I am like super excited. It's a no bake cheesecake, so. <laughs> this is so good. Okay, try and show the match one. The matcha comes through superbly well in the cheesecake as well, and like you can really give all of the flavors in there too. Oh my god, it's just amazing. It's divine. Like, cheesecake is my weakness. Cheesecake, amazing. Wow, we love it. So, I had finished Gods of Jade and Shadow by Sylvia Moreno Garcia, and I ended up giving this book four stars. I was in love and enamored by Sylvia Moreno Garcia's writing. It was such an amazing journey that we took with Cassiopeia and Hunkame and trying to see whether Hunkame would be able to get 
his um, throne back. And it was just a amazing journey of what it means to sacrifice and what it means to be a hero. And I think that, or a heroine for that matter. And I think this was just a really good story. And I really loved the intersection with mythology as well. And I gave this one four stars because whilst I did love the journey and everything, I felt for about 50% of the book that Cassiopeia was not really in any much danger, despite the fact that she was dying. I felt like the stakes had lowered um, part of the way throughout the story. But apart from that, it still read really well. And it's not something that I've noticed as much. It was only when I like finished the book and reflected upon it that I just felt that. And I really did enjoy it. And I would definitely recommend that you go pick this up because this is just amazing writing. And the story is one that I am in love with. And the finale as well, what everything was building up to was just amazing. And it really gave a satisfying conclusion to this story. And to Cassiopeia's journey as a woman of her time and speaks really well to how women can defy the patriarchal society that we even see today and how they themselves can gain their own power and it's something that we love to see. We love to see women taking power for themselves and taking power from men like wow amazing. So overall in the reading rush I managed to read three books. I read um, Gods of Jade and Shadow, obviously, and then I also read The Empire of Gold, and also I read uh, The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant. And I guess three books is quite good because obviously with everything else that I've been doing this week, um, I was a bit busy, but I am really happy with what I did. Three out of seven books for The Reading Rush, amazing. I think also I managed to accomplish quite a few of the challenges, but now I think is the time where we need to discuss something. So this year the reading rush has been under a lot of fire for a lot of the um, questionable things they have done uh, this year, including setting a challenge to read outside in the middle of a pandemic. And also it is not really a great challenge for those who aren't physically able to go outside. And also with the challenge of reading outside, instead of looking to replace the challenge, instead they wrote a blog post asking people to be creative with the challenge instead. What is not clicking? What is not clicking for them? I think they should have just replaced the challenge with something else completely. Like it wouldn't have been that hard. It would not have been that hard whatsoever. Surely if you're planning an event and something goes all right, surely you should have a backup plan. Surely you should have challenges backup challenges in place ready to go just in case one fails or just in case something happens and you're not able to run that one challenge. Isn't that what good organisation is? They also had a group book which probably wasn't promoted enough um, because me myself I didn't even know there was a group book for The Reading Rush, such a fun age. I was not aware until literally I think it was Chanel. Chanel told me there was a group book and I was just like what? And then for the live show, uh, they had laughed about the fact that they didn't actually read the book and instead had a Twitter Q&A for the rest of the um, live show. Which, to call the live show a such a fun age book discussion and then only discuss it for like a minute isn't really the point of that live show. And it really shows the misstep that the Reading Rush took this year in not actually bothering to read their group book. And especially because it is a story by a black author. Black authors, like I mentioned in my Cape May video, aren't given enough opportunities for publishing. And so this would have been an amazing opportunity for the Reading Rush to celebrate a black book. And they didn't. And that is where I personally am upset with the Reading Rush because it would have been an amazing opportunity for us all to come together and discuss this wonderful book. And I think that one, if they had promoted this book more and maybe like a midweek check-in, I think if they had got some black booktubers involved and asked them to contribute to the live show, that would have been amazing. It just goes to show a lot of the performative activism that we are seeing and a lot of the things that we as a community still need to improve on and we as a community still need to take strides towards. I think the Reading Rush definitely needs to take this constructive criticism because it is constructive criticism and show that like next year if they do decide to do the Reading Rush again they need to show that they have taken what we have said and taken strides in order to make it a better thing for everyone and I'm going to say now that I will not be participating in the Reading Rush next year. I... 
until I see that they have actively taken what we have said and actively made changes to the readathon to make a difference, I want no part of it. I want no part of it. And yes, I am very fortunate in the fact that I was physically able to go outside and I was physically able to do a lot of the challenges. I acknowledge that privilege and I acknowledge the fact that I was lucky enough to host some reading sprints for the Reading Rush this year. But me as a Black creator on this platform, I cannot stand by and watch people half-ass things. It's not on. And I want to create a safe space for everyone and it's one of those things that I, whilst I do try to be a positive person, there are some things that get to me and this is one of those things because it's hard enough that we all need to come together, but it's the fact that they didn't even bother to read the book. I think that they need to write a formal apology to everyone. I think they need to show how they're going to take active steps. But I am super happy that all of you um, were able to read a lot during this readathon. And I was able to do a lot during this readathon as well. Um, and hey, we may not have rushed our reading, but the real reward was the friends we made along the way. Yeah, I guess that is everything. Um, Thank you so much for watching this uh, reading vlog. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, consider clicking that subscribe button so that you're alerted to when I upload next. This week's shout out of his goes out to two book club YouTube channels. The first one goes out to the Unfriendly Black Hearties YouTube channel because we're going to be reading Such a Fun Age for our August book pick. So, and we're also having a live show this Friday where we're discussing The Vanishing Half and also the spread spreadsheet books that all the rest of the Unfriendly Black Hotties did. I didn't do a spreadsheet book, but soon, soon. Um, but The Vanishing Half live show will be up this Friday. And also the other book club that I'm shouting out is the By Below Files book club, and I'll be guest starring in their book club in August, where we're going to be reading Felix Ever After together. And if you wanted to support this channel any further, you can share this video on any of your social media platforms, and also you can check out my social medias in the description down below. And if you wanted to contribute any further, I have a coffee and an Amazon wish list in the description that you can use to donate as you see fit, but as, as always, they are optional. And yeah, I guess until the next video, bye friends. Okay, now I'm going to delve into this cheesecake, oh my god. I need a boyfriend like this cheesecake.